Next story. Unidirectional thought flow. Understanding mental processes at Charité Universität Staatsmedizin Berlin. In the realm of neuroscience, the human brain continues to astound and intrigue, revealing its complexity in ways that challenge previous assumptions. A recent study from Charité University Staatsmedizin Berlin has uncovered a fundamental difference in the way neurons in the human neocortex communicate compared to mice, shedding light on the efficiency and capacity of our brain to process information. Published in the prestigious journal Science, this research marks a significant breakthrough in our understanding of neural networks. The neocortex, a thin layer of the brain responsible for intelligence and consciousness, houses billions of neurons that orchestrate sensory perceptions and cognitive functions. While traditional models from animal studies proposed a back-and-forth dialogue between neighboring neurons in recurrent loops, the team led by Professor Jörg Geiger discovered a distinct pattern in human brains. Through meticulous analysis of tissue samples obtained from epilepsy patients, the researchers developed a cutting-edge method to observe neuronal communication in real-time. By utilizing an advanced version of the multi-patch technique, the team uncovered that human neurons predominantly engage in one-directional communication, unlike the looping feedback observed in mice. Dr. Yang Van Peng, the study's first author, highlighted the significance of this forward-directed signal flow, showcasing its benefits in data processing efficiency. This unique wiring architecture not only enhances information storage but also allows for the parallel execution of diverse tasks by independent neurons, mirroring a more agile and resource-efficient system. In a compelling twist, the researchers applied their findings to artificial neural networks, demonstrating that models mimicking human neural structures outperformed those based on mouse brain connectivity. The artificial neural network, inspired by the human brain's directed connectivity, excelled in tasks like speech recognition with remarkable efficiency, hinting at a potential blueprint for enhancing AI systems. The study, a collaborative effort between various departments at Charité and external partners, illuminates a new perspective on how the human brain processes information economically and effectively. By unraveling the intricacies of synaptic connectivity in the neocortex, this research not only deepens our understanding of human cognition but also paves the way for novel approaches in developing advanced artificial intelligence networks. As scientists continue to decipher the mysteries of the brain through innovative research methods and interdisciplinary collaborations, the potential for transformative breakthroughs in neuroscience and AI grows ever closer, offering a glimpse into the remarkable capabilities of the human mind. Source. www.eurikalert.org Next story. China's urban centers facing severe sinking risk. Satellite data reveal startling findings in the bustling urban landscape of China. A hidden threat lurks beneath the surface, imperiling the very foundations on which cities stand. Recently unveiled satellite data has revealed a startling reality. A third of China's urban population is at risk of city sinking, a phenomenon often overlooked but with potentially catastrophic consequences. The University of East Anglia and Virginia Tech spearheaded this groundbreaking study, shedding light on the pervasive issue of land subsidence in Chinese cities. Published in the prestigious journal Science, the research paints a stark picture of 82 cities, housing nearly 700 million people, where 45% of urban areas are sinking. Some cities are experiencing a rapid descent of 10 mm or more per year, with Beijing and Tianjin emerging as hotspots of this worrying trend. Coastal cities like Tianjin find themselves on the front lines of this battle, as sinking landscapes compound the challenges posed by climate change and rising sea levels. The haunting memory of Hurricane Katrina's devastation in New Orleans serves as a stark reminder of the perils faced by cities with sinking land. Shanghai, China's sprawling metropolis, has already subsided by three meters over the past century, a trend that shows no signs of abating. When coupled with rising sea levels, the projection for China's urban areas below sea level could triple by 2,120, impacting the lives of 55 to 128 million residents. The urgency of the situation demands a robust societal response to avert potential catastrophe. The primary culprit behind this alarming subsidence is human activity within the cities, particularly the reckless extraction of groundwater that lowers the water table. The weight of buildings and geological factors further exacerbate the issue, creating a perfect storm of instability beneath our feet. However, there is hope on the horizon. Lessons from cities like Osaka and Tokyo 
where groundwater depletion was halted in the 1970s, showcased the effectiveness of mitigation strategies. By understanding and addressing the root causes of subsidence, we can prevent further descent into urban chaos. The call to action extends beyond China's borders, as cities worldwide grapple with the silent menace of land subsidence. From measurement to meaningful action, the research community must rally together to support responses and safeguard our cities from imminent peril. As we navigate the treacherous waters of climate change and urban development, the threat of subsidence looms large, demanding our unwavering attention and concerted efforts to secure a sustainable future for generations to come. Source www.eurikalert.org Next story. Revolutionary light display in living cells at CEMM Research Center. In a breakthrough moment that could be likened to a dazzling light show within living cells, a group of researchers led by the visionary Stefan Kubitschek at the CEMM Research Center for Molecular Medicine of the Austrian Academy of Sciences has unveiled a groundbreaking method that promises to revolutionize the way we observe proteins in cellular environments. For years, Scientists have grappled with the challenge of precisely tracking proteins within cells, a task that was particularly tricky in living cells due to the laborious process of individually attaching fluorescent labels to each protein. But now, thanks to the innovative technique called VP cells, developed by Kubikex team, researchers can simultaneously label multiple proteins with five different fluorescent colors, creating a mesmerizing palette of biological fluorescence within cells. This cutting-edge approach not only simplifies the process of fluorescent protein labeling but also introduces a level of automation and high-throughput capability that was previously unimaginable. Powered by artificial intelligence-assisted image recognition, the VP cells method allows scientists to delve into the intricate world of cellular biology with unprecedented speed and accuracy, unlocking a treasure trove of possibilities across diverse fields such as fundamental cell biology and drug discovery. Imagine the ability to observe numerous proteins at once, each glowing with a distinct hue like stars in a cosmic symphony. This mesmerizing dance of fluorescent colors offers a window into the inner workings of cells, shedding light on complex cellular processes and interactions in real time. It's like witnessing a captivating light show at the tiniest scale imaginable, where each flicker of fluorescence tells a story of biological significance. With the publication of their study in the prestigious journal Nature Cell Biology, Kubitschek and his team have not only showcased the power of their innovative VP cells method but have also sparked a new era of exploration in the realm of molecular biology. The potential applications of this technology are vast and far-reaching, promising to enhance our understanding of cellular dynamics, accelerate drug development, and pave the way for novel therapeutic interventions. As researchers around the globe embrace this game-changing technique, the future of cellular imaging looks brighter than ever before. The stage is set for a captivating journey into the intricate world of living cells, where the flickering glow of fluorescent proteins illuminates the path to groundbreaking discoveries and scientific advancements. Source. www.eurikalert.org Next story. Early blood-based indicators of multiple sclerosis detected years before symptoms, in a groundbreaking discovery that could revolutionize the way multiple sclerosis, MS, is treated. Researchers at the University of California, San Francisco have unearthed a significant breakthrough. The scientists have identified a unique set of autoantibodies in the blood of individuals who later developed MS, even before any symptoms appeared. MERS, a debilitating disease affecting over 900,000 people in the United States alone, can lead to severe motor impairments. However, with new treatments emerging that can slow down its progression, the key lies in early detection. The newfound autoantibodies could potentially pave the way for a simple blood test that could alert patients to the disease's presence long before it takes hold. The study, published in Nature Medicine, sheds light on the body's production of autoantibodies against its own proteins, which may contribute to the immune attacks on the brain and spinal cord characteristic of MERS. This insight has raised hopes for earlier and more aggressive interventions, offering patients a chance at a better quality of life. Led by a team of dedicated researchers including UCSF neurologist Michael Wilson and Chan Zuckerberg Biohub SF President Joe DeRisi, the study utilized a cutting-edge technique called Phage Display Immunoprecipitation Sequencing, FISIQ, to uncover these autoantibodies. By analyzing blood samples from individuals both before and after their MS diagnosis, the researchers observed a consistent signature in a subset of patients hinting at a potential link between viral infections and autoimmune reactions. 
Furthermore, the discovery of these autoantibodies years before MS symptoms manifest opens up a realm of possibilities for early diagnosis and tailored treatment plans. Through collaboration with the UCSF Origin study, the researchers confirmed the reliability of this autoantibody pattern in predicting MS, providing a beacon of hope for medical professionals striving to offer more concrete diagnostic tools. As the research continues to unravel the complexities of MS and its origins, the newfound understanding of these autoantibodies offers a glimpse into the future of personalized medicine. With the potential to shift the paradigm from disease management to potential cures, this discovery marks a significant leap forward in the battle against MERS. The prospect of identifying MS in its early stages, long before symptoms manifest, brings a sense of urgency and optimism to the field of neurology. With further research and validation, the day may soon come when a simple blood test could change the trajectory of MS treatment, offering patients the chance for early intervention and improved outcomes. Source. www.uricalert.org. Next story. Sure preference of baby sharks unveiled by scientists. In the depths of the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Central California lies a secret nursery, not for human infants, but for fearsome baby great white sharks. These tiny terrors of the deep have been discovered to have a surprising preference for warm and shallow waters close to shore, a behavior never before observed in such detail. Led by the intrepid Dr. Christopher Lowe of California State University, a team of marine scientists embarked on a groundbreaking study to uncover the mysteries of these juvenile great white sharks. Through the use of cutting-edge sensor transmitters and high-tech tracking methods, they revealed that these young sharks congregate in nurseries near Padaro Beach, unaccompanied by adult sharks, basking in the sun-soaked shallows just a stone's throw away from the shore. The researchers discovered that these baby sharks have a knack for navigating the fluctuating temperatures of the coastal waters, diving to deeper depths at dawn and dusk to feast on the preferred prey, skates, rays, and schools of fish, while rising closer to the surface in the heat of the afternoon sun. This behavior, observed through eye-modeled 3D reconstructions, suggests that the young sharks are finely tuned to maintain their body temperature within a specific range to optimize growth efficiency. Smart little predators, indeed. But why do these juvenile great whites choose to hang out in these coastal nurseries? While the team suspects that the warm waters play a significant role, offering an optimal temperature range for the sharks, there are still many questions left unanswered. Could it be a tactical move to evade larger predators lurking in the deeper waters, or perhaps a strategy to maximize their foraging success? One thing is clear. The discovery of these shark nurseries opens a new chapter in our understanding of these enigmatic creatures. As the oceans warm due to climate change, the conservation of great white sharks becomes increasingly crucial, and insights from studies like this one are invaluable in ensuring the survival of these magnificent predators for generations to come. So the next time you find yourself at the beach, soaking up the sun and feeling the cool ocean breeze on your skin, just remember, beneath those tranquil waters, a nursery of baby sharks may be lurking just around the corner, basking in the warmth of the shallows and preparing to take on the vast and mysterious ocean that lies before them. Source. www.uricalert.org. Next story. Study. COVID-19 booster shots provide long-lasting immunity. York University finds, in the ever-evolving world of COVID-19 research, a groundbreaking study led by York University has shed light on the profound impact of booster shots on long-term immunity. The research team, comprising talented individuals from various disciplines, delved into the intricacies of the human immune system to uncover some truly fascinating insights. Published in the esteemed journal Scientific Reports, the study analyzed health data from over 150 individuals who had received Pfizer BioNTech or Moderna COVID-19 vaccines. What they found was truly remarkable. The immunity conferred by a booster shot far surpassed that of the primary vaccine series alone. Antibody half-life nearly doubled, jumping from 63 days with the primary series to 115 days post-booster. This finding has significant implications for public health strategies moving forward. But the study didn't stop there. It also tackled the complex interplay of age, sex, and comorbidities on immune response. While age is known to impact immune priming, the researchers discovered that once comorbidities were factored in, age alone did not significantly affect the longevity of the immune response. This finding challenges conventional wisdom and underscores the need for a more nuanced understanding of immune dynamics. 
Intriguingly, the study also unearthed gender disparities in immune response, with males exhibiting a slightly stronger response than females. Additionally, individuals with asthma were found to have a particularly robust and enduring immune response, surpassing even those with hybrid immunity from prior infection and vaccination. These unexpected findings underscore the complexity of the immune system and hint at potential avenues for further research. Beyond the scientific revelations, the study highlights the power of interdisciplinary collaboration. By bringing together experts from mathematics, statistics, and immunology, the research team was able to unravel intricate patterns in immune response. This serves as a testament to the value of diverse perspectives in advancing scientific knowledge and innovation. As York University gears up to open its medical school in 2028, the researchers are optimistic about the future of interdisciplinary research. With access to real-time clinical data and a wealth of expertise on hand, the potential for groundbreaking discoveries is immense. The study not only pushes the boundaries of our understanding of COVID-19 immunity but also paves the way for a new era of collaborative research at the intersection of science and medicine. In a world where scientific breakthroughs are constantly reshaping our reality, this study stands out as a beacon of insight and discovery. It challenges preconceived notions, opens up new avenues of exploration, and highlights the transformative power of interdisciplinary collaboration in the pursuit of knowledge. Source. Uric Alert. www.uricalert.org. Next story. The zebrafish heart regeneration mystery unraveled at the University of Utah, in the depths of the aquatic world, where the beating heart of nature thrives, lies a tale of two fish that reveals a remarkable secret that has puzzled scientists for ages. The zebrafish, a tiny tropical wonder, possesses a superpower that sets it apart from its finned counterparts. While a human heart struggles to heal from the scars left by a heart attack, the zebrafish can regenerate damaged tissue with remarkable ease. But why can this fish perform such a miraculous feat, while others flounder in the face of cardiac injury? Enter the intrepid biologists from the University of Utah, led by the visionary assistant professor Jamie Gagnon. In their quest for answers, they turn to the zebrafish and its less remarkable cousin, the medica. Through meticulous research and painstaking experiments, they uncovered a trail of clues that pointed towards the immune system as the key player in the zebrafish's regenerative abilities. As the team delved deeper into the molecular and cellular mechanisms at play, they discovered that the zebrafish's immune response to heart injuries was akin to a symphony of healing orchestrated by nature itself. Unlike the medica, the zebrafish exhibited a robust immune reaction, reminiscent of a viral infection, that kick-started the regeneration process within its heart. But the mystery was far from solved. The study revealed tantalizing glimpses of the intricate dance of cells and signals that paved the way for the zebrafish's remarkable recovery. From immune cell recruitment to epicardial signaling, each piece of the puzzle hinted at the ancient origins of heart regeneration in fish a trait that may have been lost in the evolutionary journey of other species, including mammals like us. Armed with knowledge gleaned from these tiny aquatic wonders, the researchers embarked on a journey of discovery that could one day revolutionize the field of regenerative medicine. By unraveling the secrets of the zebrafish's regenerative prowess, they hoped to pave the way for groundbreaking treatments that could one day help heal human hearts scarred by disease. Through their experiments with cryoprobes and RNA sequencing, the team uncovered a world of difference between the zebrafish and the medica. From the unique immune response triggered by the zebrafish to the formation of new blood vessels and muscle cells, each discovery brought them closer to unlocking the secrets of nature's most gifted healers. As the study, titled, Distinct Features of the Regenerating Heart Uncovered Through Comparative Single-Cell Profiling, found its place in the annals of scientific literature, a new chapter in the saga of heart regeneration had begun. With the backing of the National Institutes of Health and the dedication of Gagnon's team, the promise of one day harnessing the regenerative power of the zebrafish for human benefits seemed closer than ever before. In a world where the beating heart symbolizes life and vitality, the zebrafish stands as a beacon of hope, a reminder that nature's wonders still hold the keys to unlocking the mysteries of our own existence. Source www.uricalert.org Next story. Invasive species speak out on upcoming ecosystem shifts, in the heart of Virginia, a groundbreaking study led by a team of researchers has unveiled a fascinating discovery that could change the way we observe and understand ecosystems. Grace O'Malley and Gabrielle Reaper, two ambitious PhD candidates, 
have delved into the world of invasive species to uncover the hidden impact they have on the acoustic environment of their surroundings. The concept of soundscapes, the unique acoustic patterns that define a landscape, has long been studied in the context of individual species. However, O'Malley and Reaper took a different approach by exploring the soundscape of entire ecosystems, shedding light on the effects of non-native invasive plants on the surrounding environment. By setting up recording devices in various locations, the researchers were able to capture the subtle differences in sound between areas invaded by non-native plants and those restored to their native state. Surprisingly, even in a short two-week pilot study, distinct changes in the soundscape were observed, indicating that invasive plants may indeed be altering the acoustic composition of their habitats. This innovative research, published in the Journal of the Ecological Society of America, has opened up a new avenue of exploration for scientists across disciplines. The team's findings not only highlight the potential impact of invasive species on soundscapes but also point towards broader implications for ecosystem health and biodiversity. What started as a whimsical idea has now blossomed into a full-fledged research endeavor, thanks to the collaboration between Jacob Barney, Merrill Mims, and the dedicated team of young researchers. With support from the Institute for Creativity, Arts, and Technology, as well as the Global Change Center, the project has gained momentum and is paving the way for a deeper understanding of the interconnectedness of species within ecosystems. As the researchers continue to expand their study and delve into the mechanisms by which invasive plants influence the soundscape, they are calling on fellow scientists to join them in this uncharted territory. The potential implications of their work extend far beyond the realm of academia, offering a fresh perspective on the complex interactions that shape our natural world. In a time of unprecedented environmental challenges, the voices of invasive species are speaking volumes, urging us to listen closely and rethink our approach to conservation and restoration efforts. The symphony of nature is ever-evolving, and it is up to us to tune in and decipher the melodies of change that echo through our ecosystems. Source. www.eurecalert.org Next story. Revolutionary study finds diet beats medication for IBS treatment in the world of gastrointestinal disorders, an ailment that often leaves many struggling in silence is irritable bowel syndrome, IBS. Imagine the discomfort of abdominal pain, gas, diarrhea, or constipation impacting your daily life. But fear not, for a recent study conducted at the University of Gothenburg has uncovered a fascinating revelation that could potentially transform the way we approach IBS treatment. The study embarked on a quest to unravel the efficacy of different treatment modalities in managing IBS symptoms. Traditional remedies often involve dietary adjustments, medication interventions, or a combination of both. However, the researchers sought to compare the effectiveness of dietary treatments against conventional medicinal approaches in a cohort of patients suffering from severe to moderate IBS symptoms. The participants were divided into three groups, one receiving standard IBS dietary advice focusing on low FODMAPs, another following a diet low in carbohydrates but high in protein and fat, and the third group receiving medication tailored to their specific symptoms. After a four-week treatment period, the results were nothing short of astonishing. Those who adhered to the traditional IBS dietary advice combined with low FODMAP intake saw a staggering 76% reduction in symptoms. Similarly, the low-carbohydrate diet group exhibited a noteworthy 71% improvement, while the medication group lagged slightly behind at 58%. The findings not only showcased symptom relief but also unveiled enhancements in the overall quality of life and reductions in anxiety and depression symptoms across all groups. What's truly remarkable is the sustainability of the dietary treatments. Even after a six-month follow-up where participants had somewhat reverted to their previous eating habits, a large percentage still experienced meaningful alleviation of symptoms, 68% in the traditional dietary group and 60% in the low-carb diet group. Led by the dynamic trio of Sanna Nybacker, Stein Storsrud, and Magnus Simren, the study pioneers a new era in IBS management. Nybacker emphasizes the pivotal role of diet in IBS treatment while hinting at the need for personalized therapeutic approaches tailored to individual responses. The endeavor to decipher the ideal treatment strategy for each patient continues, with ongoing investigations delving into predictive factors that could optimize treatment outcomes. In a world where gastrointestinal distress often goes unaddressed or mistreated, this groundbreaking study shines a beacon of hope offering a glimmer of relief to those battling the invisible burden of IBS. 
The journey towards personalizing treatment approaches and unlocking the full potential of dietary interventions has never been more crucial in the realm of gastrointestinal health. So, next time you think about reaching for that medication to alleviate your IBS woes, perhaps consider a dietary tweak as your first line of defense. After all, as the adage goes, you are what you eat, and in the case of IBS, what you eat could be the key to unlocking a life free from digestive distress. Source www.uricalert.org Next story. Stimulating careers linked to lower dementia risk later in life. In a groundbreaking study conducted by Columbia University's Mailman School of Public Health, researchers have uncovered a fascinating connection between the nature of one's occupation and the risk of developing dementia later in life. This study, published in Neurology, has shed light on the profound impact of engaging in cognitively stimulating work throughout adulthood on cognitive health in old age. The researchers delved into data collected from the Norwegian Administrative Registry and matched it with occupational attributes of over 300 jobs from the U.S. Department of Labor's Occupational Information Network. By computing a routine task intensity, RTI, index based on the cognitive demands of different occupations, the researchers were able to identify distinct groups based on the level of cognitive stimulation individuals experienced in their jobs during their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. The results were striking. Those who engaged in low occupational cognitive demands had a 37% higher risk of dementia compared to those with high occupational cognitive demands, even after adjusting for factors such as age, gender, education, income, overall health, and lifestyle habits. The study emphasized the importance of both education and cognitively stimulating work throughout one's career in reducing the risk of mild cognitive impairment and dementia in later life. Lead researcher Vigard Skerbeck highlighted the significance of mentally challenging job tasks in maintaining cognitive function as individuals age, underscoring the pivotal role of midlife cognitive stimulation in preserving cognitive health. This study, unlike many others in the field, employed objective assessments rather than relying on subjective evaluations, strengthening the evidence supporting the association between occupational cognitive demands and cognitive health in old age. While the study identifies associations rather than direct causation of dementia and did not differentiate between varying cognitive requirements within the same occupational category, its findings provide valuable insights into the potential protective effects of cognitively stimulating occupations. The study's co-authors underscore the need for further research to pinpoint the specific occupational cognitive demands that offer the greatest benefits for cognitive health in aging populations. This research not only enhances our understanding of the link between occupation and cognitive health but also underscores the critical role that cognitive stimulation throughout one's career can play in mitigating the risk of cognitive decline in later life. As we continue to unravel the complexities of brain health and aging, studies like these pave the way for new approaches to promoting cognitive well-being across the lifespan. Source www.uricalert.org